The purpose of this channel is to reveal secrets of the universe, of the planet, of our government, of life, that the mainstream media wants to keep secret or doesn't feel that they'll make money by reporting it. You do understand that the news now is a business. It was accepted as a failing business for most of all of our lives. And then recently they discovered that, not that they discovered, but they said this should not be a failing business. Then the business, then the news business became a business and reporting certain things made them money. Because of that, they don't want to report certain things because it doesn't make money. Also, the news has been captured. That means that people have bought up news networks across the land. And now there's only three people that own all the news. Because of that, they can control the news. I've been reporting about these robots. Here's some information. The people that I'm talking about, all of the information about them has been scrubbed off the internet. All of it. I'm small enough that I don't come into on anybody's radar, but I'm large enough to reach a fairly large audience. 100,000, 200,000, 2 million. Now I have 13 million views total on the channel. Here's what I need you to do. Watch the entire video. When I say comment, leave a comment if you understand what I'm talking about. My language is to get across to secretly tell you stuff that the robot won't pick up on. So I want you to comment on what you think I'm talking about. And then of course I'll respond. Yeah, that's exactly right. The comments aren't as regulated as much as, much as me speaking. The robot literally uh, goes over what it thinks I'm saying word for word. And if it doesn't like the words, it'll remove the video. So leave a comment on what you think I'm saying. Give a thumbs up so that the uh, audience can be seen and share the video to reach a larger audience. I'm trying to reveal secrets, scientific, everything. Space, everything. If the channel grows far enough, the Shakama live show will be a set of live shows. Like I used to be. This is I, I used to be on a different channel, a different uh, network. I had a fairly big audience and I came over to YouTube and that was pretty big. I've been trying to contact to get the contact information of the robot studios that I've been reporting on. I think you all may get it, or you may not, that these guys don't need to advertise. At $345,000, they have a very limited clientele to begin with. Why would they need to advertise? Their customers advertise for them, and more than likely, are the best option for advertising. If you can afford $345,000, more than likely you hang out with friends who can afford $345,000. Let me school you on how terrible advertising is. Coca-Cola spends nearly half of their budget on advertising to this very moment to keep worldwide recognition. It's millions of dollars in advertising expense. What's the product? Syrup. I bet 90% of you just were stunned. Coca-Cola sells Coca-Cola syrup. So they sell tons of this syrup that they hope everyone, including your newborn baby, will drink. When's the last time you saw a Rolls Royce commercial? Perhaps never? With those millions of dollars, Coca-Cola is happy if 1%, yes, 1% of the people watching the commercial goes out and buys a Coca-Cola. Just 1%. These underground robot companies spend millions of dollars on robot parts. They can't afford to spend millions on marketing to get less than, less than 1% of the population to even consider buying their robots. It's a total losing proposition. You understand what I'm saying? Even if they advertise, and even if they spent millions, like, like Coca-Cola, they couldn't get 1%. Why? Because 1% can't afford, can't afford the robot to begin with. Do you understand that the 1% that people keep talking about in the news are people who make about $333,000? People who make $333,000 $333, a year. That's how much they make. So they're not rich by any stretch of the imagination. They are not rich. They say 1%, that's 1%. They're not talking about millionaires. This is a common fallacy that people believe it because the news is trying to lead you down a path of not understanding. $333,000 a year is not rich. What kind of house does a person who makes $333,000 live in? What kind of car do they drive? 
Do they go to parties? Do they go on vacation? Do they have children? How much do they spend on their children? How much do they spend on wardrobes? After all of that is calculated, how much do you think they actually take home, keep, put into their bank on $333,000? Here's a shocking statistic. Most of them don't have anything in the bank. How, how crazy is that? So this 1% that the news keeps talking about, if you're a very shrewd, stingy guy that makes $40,000 a year, I bet you could have more in the bank than most, most of the guys making $333,000. The doctor said the doctor had to go to certain parties, had to drive a certain car, wife had to have a certain wardrobe, wife had to have certain jewelry, they had to maintain and keep a certain house to then invite people to uh, parties at their house. Had to. So all of that baggage comes with that $333,000. You people making $40,000, if you go through my stuff, you can find out how to make, how to keep thousands of dollars a year. These underground robot companies spend millions of dollars on robot parts so they can't afford this advertising to people who can't afford the robot to begin with. There's nothing illegal about their robots, but crazy women are trying to get laws banning them. Crazy churches are trying to find them and burn them down. Crazy social justice warriors are trying to get banks to stop funding them. Advertising isn't in the cards. So you get a tiny part of the population that can only afford them, who tell their friends about them, who are also a part of the tiny population. And then you have all these lunatics trying to shut you down and even the cheap $5,000 robots made by other companies are being targeted. Meanwhile, no one is addressing the fact that women of today are anti-man. Women of today try to control the superior gender in the human race. Why? Because women who don't want men in the first place in that way told them the other women. If you understand that, what I mean by that, those women leave a comment below, told them, the regular women, men are the cause of all of their problems, and they have even brainwashed them to believe that no problem is caused by the women's own lack of responsibility. And that giant circle of crazy leads back to why there's a robot for $345,000, and, and even robots for $5,000 that does virtually nothing except speak when you tell it to speak and has a very highly engineered girl part. Leave a comment below if you understand what I mean by girl part. Women would rather scream and claw and curse than take a step back and say, my God, women must have pushed men so far away from us that men are willing to pay $345,000 for a real life companion that learns exactly how a man wants to be talked to, clean up, do dishes, and go to bed with. Let me say this. Women say they don't want to clean up and cook and clean and they don't, they don't want to uh, bear the babies and stay at home. Then you don't want to be married. There's no movement that needs to be done. You don't want to be married. And for those who say that they want to be married, what do you really want? You want a man to pay for everything and you don't want to do anything. You don't want to do anything for it. There is a tit for tat. It's called karma for everything you can't sit at home and do nothing and get a man to spend half a million dollars on you or millions of dollars on you and then turn around and divorce him and take money and say oh well i was used to that so i i deserve now that's some corruption right there now where's the real corruption here's the thing that you don't know you don't get that half a million dollar reward from the man that the court says the court is so the judge takes money, the, the city takes money, the county takes money, all the lawyers in the, in the room take money, everybody takes money out of that pot. You don't get that. Do you understand that? You don't get that. And here's the deal. That man that they did a judgment against for $500,000, and I just did a review on that, he has that job or he has those assets that keep providing him with half a million dollars. After you get your half a million dollars and you're living in this house that costs $20,000 a month to upkeep and you have no job, I have a man here who had a wife, they divorced on their own. He gave her 50000 he's a broke guy, he's a, he's a broke dude, 50000 he wasn't broke at the time, $50,000, kissed her, said, all right, bye. 
guess what happened? Two years later, she's completely broke. She comes back, wines and dines him and proposes to him that they get married again. He gets married again because she's a hot babe and he's a hot stud. This time they get divorced. She takes the gold bars, the silver bars. She takes this and that and the other. Cleans his clock, cleans him completely. She says, this time I'm going to do it right. $50,000, that was chump change. I'm going to do it right this time. She gets a lawyer and cleans his clock. Wipes him completely clean. He is devastated. He's broke. He's poor. Now, let me give you my psychological evaluation of uh, his state now. He never recovered from that. Simply because he just could not accept the fact that he was he was duped. He was fine. He had gold bars, silver bars, business, everything. She cleaned his clock. She he accepted to, to marry her again, and uh, she cleaned him out completely. Why that was, I don't know. Other than she got a good lawyer, and he did not. I don't know why he didn't get a good lawyer. I think he was in love. He was in love. I told you never marry for love. And I got a whole bunch of women saying, well, "How dare you say that? Don't never marry." No, marry for a reason. Marry for a reason. That reason will never go away once the love and once the looks are gone. Marry for a reason. If you're going to get married, marry for a reason. And for that reason only. Men don't mature until they're like 30. And when I say, what I mean by mature is they don't have complete control of their body and their brain. The human brain doesn't finish developing until age 25. So already, most of you all are, are in a deficit when you get married and go out and start dating at 22 and what, all that sort of crazy stuff, right? You're right for the picking for anybody. Uh, men don't mature until about 30. So I wouldn't recommend you even getting married until you were 30. Uh, I'm, I'm right for getting married now. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to say something later that's going to blow you away. Keep keep watching. So he, he did marry this fat woman. He and, uh, He's still married to her. But she was an abused woman. She was completely abused. Completely. So she's always expecting to be abused. And he doesn't love her. He doesn't he doesn't even like her. But he has a sex partner. Right? Look at that. That's that's what's going on. He doesn't even like this woman. He said over and over again, she's not good looking. She's not good looking. She has she's not good looking. She has the she's terrible. She's got diabetes. She's got arthritis. She's older than he is. She's like sixty something. He's fifty something. He wants a robot. That's all he wants. He, and he, he doesn't need the $345,000 robot. He wants the $5,000 robot. Or I'm saying he would, he'd be happy with the $5,000 robot. I don't think you all understand how dysfunctional a lot of these marriages are to begin with. These people are getting married because they think they have to get married. He's 50-something. Of course he thinks he has to get married because that's the area that he came in. I com- completely agree with you women who say you shouldn't get married. I agree. You shouldn't get married. You. You shouldn't get married. Not everybody else. You shouldn't get married. You should not have children. You should not procreate. You should not pass on your genes. I am not passing judgment on either side. I'm alone. I came here alone. I'm an only child. I will probably die alone. Lately, the selfishness of my neighbors has shown me that being alone is the best thing for me personally. I'll make my little money, adopt some kid, and give him my money. Yes, men are selfish too. But men make the skyscrapers. This is where women fail to recognize the superiority of men. Yes, you're both at fault, but at the end of the day, the Hoover Dam was built in the blood of men, not women. Mount Rushmore was built in the blood of men, not women. The Golden Gate Bridge was built in the blood of men, not women. The BW2 was built in the blood of men, not women. So frankly, who cares if a man stays home when he gets cold? He gets up and moves mountains. Not only do women not do that, they can't. And they need to realize that they can't, cannot, are incapable of doing it. Jordan Peterson was talking to a, a woman, I'm sure you've seen it on the, on the BBC or, or is it RT or some international news channel. Google has, a, I think, tried to ban Jordan, Jordan Peterson from, from the internet completely. Google, all by itself, you yeah. know. The internet, the vast. Anyway. So uh, they're talking about women, men and women, of course. That's his expertise. 
And he politely says, uh, the average intelligence men and women are the same. And then he went on to say, the extremities, though, of men, genius, goes off into infinity. Idiocy goes off into infinity. Idiocy is a psychological term. So when somebody's calling you an idiot, they're calling you really, really dumb really unintelligent to the point of not having not being able to do bodily functions that's what actually idiot means it's a psychological term so it's it, it's an insult that really should fall on deaf ears because most of the people talking to you cannot be idiots you shut up over there cannot be idiots why can they not not be idiots because you're talking to them and they're talking back an idiot would be in a helmet and wear a diaper Everybody says, Trump's an idiot. You're an idiot. You're insane. The guy's a genius. Everybody has recognized that the guy's a genius. And he's genius in so many compartments that his average, his stuff that he does averagely is still up there. As in approaching genius. Step back and take a look at the man. Leave your politics out of it. I'm libertarian. I'm not for or against him. Women need to accept that they can't do that. And I was going to say about Jordan Peterson. The average intelligence of a man, when you take into account all of the idiots, all of the geniuses, the average intelligence of a man is far higher than women. What he meant to say, and what people are trying to mean to say, is the mean. What is the mean? It's, it's the number of most people fall into this category of intelligence. So out of the, all of the millions of men and, and boys, and out of the millions of women and girls, there's about a million that fall here. And that line is north of what it is for women. So average people are of average intelligence. Surprise? Are you shocked? Are you amazed by that? And most people, humans, men or women at the mean fall right there but if you take the averages of all men versus all women it's going to be so it's going to be superior to women why because women don't have geniuses women don't have idiots though you all are sort of stuck in the middle you go from eh, not such an idiot to eh, a little bit smart. Most women fall into average intelligence. People like Oprah Winfrey, Jay-Z, Russell Simmons, and all of the black business people that you never see on the news who are millionaires raise the average income of black people. If you remove them, you would have an average income for black people. And it would be average black people aren't as poor as the news would have you believe why because there are in fact black businessmen worth millions the number one franchisee of mcdonald's is a black consortium who owns thousands of mcdonald's you understand and the guy next to him another black guy and the guy next to him another black guy a guy next to him. <laughs> why because black people are smart who, who, what's the number chain in the world mcdonald's black by a by a mile burger king can't compare nobody can compare franchises worldwide mcdonald's you can find a burger king i went to the burger king in paris i mean it was, it was burger king in paris it, and it's not cheap. That's what's crazy. It's not cheap. And it's Burger King in Paris. Let's import this horrible food. And the only re- I believe the only reason that they're, they're open and thriving in any of those countries is simply because it has it's American. That's it. That's it. The name brand of American helps out the business more than Burger King. Because Burger King is, of course, crap. McDonald's is, of course, crap. And McDonald's in China serves Chinese food. McDonald's in Japan serves Japanese food. They serve burgers, but they mostly serve Japanese food. 
They mostly serve Chinese food. What you would expect in China. Paris, they serve Burger King. And you can buy beer there. <laughs> beer, I don't know about wine. Maybe some wine. I don't know. Yeah. So, there's some locality to it, but for the most part, it's because the Western countries don't, I mean, Europeans don't, they don't really, they don't like to admit that they have culture or anything like that. They just say, oh, we have culture, we have culture. You know, with all the things that men do, that, that men do, and they're superior in intelligence, they're superior physically, they're superior, superior, superior uh, genetically. And I'm going to get into that in a second. This is iteration three of this freaking video. Women don't answer with all humans come through us. Because now, even that is not happening anymore. Women have been convinced to stop that. Let me tell you about the African mythos that believes that the woman is to be worshipped and that man is supposed to be worshipped. Europeans just say oh, men should be worshipped. Why? Because men are the ones who just built a huge cathedral around you that you're sitting and worshipping it. Of course men should are our superior. The Africans believe all humanity comes through the woman. That sounds fantastic, doesn't it? All humanity comes through women. Okay, that's something I can get on board with. The Ankh that you see, that you think is Egyptian, is actually African. The Ankh is a diagram of the uterus. That's what the Ankh is. So all you people walk around, all you white people walk around with onks around your neck. It's an African thing. Purely African. And the mythos of worshipping the woman and the man is purely African. It's not in any other society, not in any other culture. There's some rare tribes that worship women. And women alone. And the women do this, and the women do that, blah, 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 blah. That's just tribes. a single tribes. That's not whole cultures. And the only reason that those tribes are still alive is because they kind of modernize. I went through the rabbit hole of watching all of that stuff one day, and I mean... It was fascinating. And uh, when the tribes were at war, of course, what did they do? They they fell back on the men. Protect us. Uh, weird, weird sort of situation. Well, guess what? There's a robot that can carry a baby and birth a baby. And she'll never stop the baby from coming. And the man doesn't need a woman at all to create the baby. Women, is it clicking it? Just how far gone your kind has gone to push, push, push to make this a reality. Let's take a step back to truly appreciate the baby part. Not, there's no female egg it comes from. Because men have already seen that a surrogate can swoop in and claim a baby and even demand child support for a baby the man wanted for himself. And courts back the surrogate up. So this robot baby comes from sperm from a man and DNA from a man. There's no woman involved at all. In my name, how far have you pushed man that this is the reality? And guess what? The man can now create men and women from his own body. Let's go that rab down that rabbit hole just for a second. A man, when he creates a baby with a robot, not with a robot, but he can create a baby. He has the genetic code to create men and women. They have tried this with women. Guess what? You create women from a woman, or you create a baby from a woman, she can only create females. Only females. There would be no skyscrapers. There would be no bridges. There would not be the seven wonders of the world, all created by men. Now, I want you to go down that rabbit hole. Imagine a world, a world of only women. Let me bring you, I know reality shows uh, you think aren't reality, but they are reality in the sense that uh, the, particip the participants do exactly what they would do in the situation. There is a little bit of a script that is involved, but for the reactions and stuff, this is, this is what they really want. The reactions are all 100% true. The reactions. Survivor Australia. UK, some of some ways. Survivor, one of the, the Survivor show. Divided off the men and the women. Survivor, for those of you who don't know, is that they take people and put them out in a jungle or wherever. And they say, all right, have at it. Yeah, okay. 
So they divided the uh, men and women up. The men. Uh, there's the, the, I'm going to start with men because that's the only story that there is. The men divided up the labor. Somebody's going to build the uh, build the shelters. Somebody's going to go fish. Somebody's going to hunt. Somebody's going to go. Somebody's going to wash the clothes that they created. Somebody's going to make the beds, like actually make them. Somebody's going to make the covers. Somebody's going to stand watch. Complete organization. Let's go over to the Foreman Island. No shelters. No food. They sat out and got tans in their bikinis. And when they got hungry, the producers of the show said, you know what, that was not a great idea. Let's bring the women to the male island and we're going to mix up the groups. Female, male, female, male, right? So they did that. And guess what? The men built the shelters, the men did the hunting, the men did the fishing, the men made the beds. And the women sat around. So I want you to now, I want you to go down this rabbit hole of women only being able to produce women. Huh? What? You're going to die off in a couple of years? Pretty much. Pretty much. If men went on strike like women went on strike, remember that march down Washington? If, women, if, 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 if men went on strike like women went on strike, the, the city would halt. The city, everybody, the hospitals would shut down. Or what else can you think of? Electricity was shut down. If men went on strike, uh, Bush, Obama, he was who was who was who was, who was, who was president. Uh, Trump was president. Would call the National Guard, uh, but he couldn't call the National Guard because there is no National Guard because they're on strike because men are on strike. So he can't call the National Guard to tell the men to get back to work. In fact, Congress was shut down. How many women in Congress? How many women in the White House? No, Trump would be on strike. The entire presidency, uh, that entire White House would be on strike. If men went on strike. Court system would be on strike. Police would be on strike. Maybe criminals would be on strike? No, we know criminals don't follow the law. So criminals would run rampant. There'd be no police. Most of the governments around all of the states would, would be on strike. Most. All? All. We'll be on strike. Let's, we were talking about that rabbit hole, right? You know what what do, what do women, women contribute? They do stuff. However, they do it better. Instead of praising your role, if I were running the feminist movement, this is how it would be. You ready, you ready for this rabbit hole? If, 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 if I were in charge of the feminists, instead of praising your role, as being mother, as being the bringer of all humanity. Feminists now literally poop on mothers and saying, sitting at home, having babies is degenerate. If I were in charge of feminism, I said, let's be in charge of feminism. In everything that a woman does intrinsically should be praised. I would have Mother's Day be actual Mother's Day, huh? We would have parades about with pregnant women going down the street. Have you looked at Japan? When they praise men, they have mm 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 running down the street. Leave a comment below if you understand what I'm talking about. Mm 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 running down the street in the parades. Giant ones, giant honking ones, which no Japanese has probably ever seen, right? They have ice creams, popsicle sticks made out of that shape. They have deep fried sugar made out of that shape. That's how you do it, huh? I would have pregnant women in all of their glory, in the best dresses, uh, nine months pregnant, eight months pregnant, just bursting to at the seams, and we would televise her rush to the to the midwife, because midwives would be praised too, because it's feminism, right? It's not hospitalism, it's feminism. Rush to the, the midwives would be on the scene in a clean stall of her giving birth to a baby, right? Right there. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, this is feminism. There you go. We would, we would praise the itty-bitty 
bikini committee. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing that. Leave a comment below to correct that statement. Uh, we would the, the 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 buxom blondes. We would praise feminism, not this idiocy that they got going. This craziness, this insanity that they got going. I mean, women and men and women are equal. They're not equal. There's I mean, and the more that I research it, the more that I come to the realization that we're not even remotely equal. It's as if women are different being all together. It's amazing that we're the same species even. That's how different men and women are. When I talked about the man staying home with a cold, they have scientifically, biologically proven that when men get a cold, there's a part of the brain that doesn't even exist in the female. How crazy is that? And when men get, get the cold, this part of the brain is massively affected and it renders you almost useless. It's, it, 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 it is a, it's a blessing that you have a medulla and you have an autonom autonomic system that keeps you breathing and all that sort of stuff, right? That you don't have to think about, right? Otherwise, when men would get a cold, they would shut down and probably pass away. That's how serious that is. And women were making fun. Oh, man cold. Oh, man cold. Oh, oh, my God. This is how far gone this feminism is. That they're massive. They're laughing at the demise of men. And they had doctors on there come and explain it. Yes, there's a whole part of the brain that is affected. And it's, it gets infected. And it renders it tough, big, brutish guys completely uh, incapacitated. And the women laugh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's nothing equal about us. Nothing. Some scientists have said it's, it's as if women are a different species. Women. We call them women. One man. Uh, but they're very different from, from men. Very different. Vastly different on all sorts of levels. And then there's a uh, the modern Morpheus. Have you taken a look at him? He said, we're not speaking. It's only that the human brain is, in, is, is translating for each of us instantaneously translating. As you hear my voice, you're translating. I want to say I appreciate all of the compliments of the people who understand everything that I say. That's, that's, I, I'm, an, I'm kind of an audiophile. I'm not an audio, audiophile in the sense that I uh, buy expensive headphones. I like that. I like sound to be perfect, and I can hear and distinguish different sounds. Thank you for that. Men and women are not equal, not on any level. With an all with an all female world, I think the world would die out. But this is not so with men. They've shown men going off to war, tribal men going off in their hunting parties. And what's funny is this whole notion of an alpha male. Well, the notion is that there are men who lead men and who are above men. And that's not the case. That is not the case. Uh, the uh, guy who actually coined the term alpha wolf uh, said uh, he was mistaken. What it was was wolves don't, don't run in packs. They're running families. You can't tell a female wolf from a male wolf. Well, the, the layman can't, right? So what you're saying is a pack of a family of wolves. One family. One family. And they don't vie for power. That's some, something made up by uh, so the werewolf people. Men don't have a single leader. Men are so f superiorly smart that they know that this guy is superior in this aspect. This guy is superior in this guy, in this aspect. This is why, intrinsically, men don't kill off short men. They don't kill off fat men. They don't kill off uh, skinny men. Why? Because the skinny guy is superior here. The short, tiny guy is superior. Oh, we need a tiny guy. Get bring the tiny guy in. Literally, there's a uh, construction crew, and they have a tiny guy that uh, goes does the depth work for them. They say they could not. They would not be able. They would have to tear down an entire house. They'd have to tear down an entire building just to fix the duck work. Or they can get a little small guy. And do the duck work for them. And men are A-OK -okay with sticking their arm down a hole through here and, and doing welding. Not see, not seeing it. This is the stuff that men do. This, 
there is no alpha male, there's no superior guy. That's that's all a mythos. If that was the case, nerds, the nerds would have been killed off a long time ago, right? It's the big buff guy who's smart enough to understand the guy's a nerd. Wait a minute. I don't like you. <laughs> oh, wait, actually, can you do my taxes? Yeah, that's men. Men actually get along with each other. So there's no feel fear of a world dying out with, with men having the babies, quote unquote. Men and women will still come forth, and the man will be the bringer of humans, not women. And, and finally, let's go down this rabbit hole. What would it be for men to just wait for women to die out and only produce men for about a thousand years to make sure None of the, none of, none of this insanity about women being equal to men and women being blah, 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 so forth and so on. They could then turn around and start producing women because men have the genetics to do so. Women do not have the genetics to do so. This harkens back to that little story that you've all read in, about creation, right? Perhaps the conspiracy theorists have it right that the entire book that you're reading, you know, leave a comment below if you uh, understand what book I'm talking about. You all should all understand what book I'm talking about. That the entire book was talking about aliens doing this, not the other, and uh, uh, creating humanity. Aliens. So they created m men, namely African men, uh, with all the genetics of the entire human race all of them and that women comes genetically from men you can't get men uh, you can't get men from women you can only get men from men but you can also get women from men but the reverse is not true for women you absolutely need a man to produce a man and there's social aspects to that to that statement right there too right you can only get a man from a man Man could produce, after a thousand years of only producing men, women. And hopefully in that time, women would behave. Women would know that what's, what's real and what's, what's not real. I made, it, I made a uh, video talking about they have did a massive study. Studying women in the workplace. Studying women in labor. Studying women in high up and it has been a massive failure at the end of the day women take more from society than they ever give in any sort of production or taxes work producing the con the converse is not true for men men produce way more they pay 70 percent of all taxes it is irrefutable the proof is irrefutable and the, uh, the fat lady has sung that it has just been no contest that men contribute to society way more than women. And now that women are saying they're not going to have children and they won't, they won't cont uh, let the uh, child production continue, there's no use for women. This is a conclusion. If you disagree with it, leave a comment below. Thank you all for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.